Hey everyone, Bozo here, back with just a bit more casual DOK action. Uh, these two... What am I trying to say? My brain exploded. Well, these are just some casual matches played between Moose and A-Game Inks. A-Game playing Galzin here, looks like Moose is still won, but this is not from the tournament. We actually already cast these guys' group stage matches. If you haven't seen those yet, I'd recommend going back. The vlogs are still up, otherwise hopefully it'll be up on YouTube pretty soon. <laughs> maybe. Um... <laughs> But that was only like a couple days ago, if I recall correctly, that we cast why, that. Oh my gosh. Somebody hosted. What's happening? Whoa! Well, hello. Thanks for the raid. Anyway, Moose here looks like it's going to be uh, SC first coming out from him. Uh, he does do this pretty properly, I think. He put one on our use first, yep. And uh, A-game, meanwhile, probably going to be going for ref mode. That seems Yeah, because he's moving this PC out here, so obviously that's going to be... His game plan, gonna be dropping that scanner out here so that he can get some, some eyes on things. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll probably see that tech coming out any moment now. He's got the money, there we go, there's the quick drop. A game versus a uh, moose. I've never been raided by, like, actual people before. I think, like, A game has jumped in with, you know, one viewer before. Well, welcome to the stream, guys. Hope you enjoy it. We're casting this dead game that no one plays anymore except for us. <laughs> Ref mode about 40 seconds out now, you'd expect, yep, there it is, Instagram Fab comes out for A-game. He doesn't like to do this, uh, like, greedy thing where you go for, uh, salvagers right off the back of it. And then, probably he'll leave the PC here, I, I've made this mistake on turn alt before, it's so common, like, you know, you move the PC onto the carrier and then move the carrier onto second base because then he'll be closer to third, but on Torin you're actually further away. I've done that, like, countless times. Um, and so, yeah... He's going to be probably leaving the PC here, because obviously the third base is going to be closer to the carrier that way. Scanner did get him good info, and he put this at a very nice uh, place as well, just right behind this hill here. So, as you can see, LAV still doesn't have line of sight on it, it's going to have to come over the dune. Um, but he's gotten all the info he needed, this is obviously, uh... Obviously... Oh, is this what we're doing now? This is obviously um, SC first here, so he's not going to be surprised at all. Uh... Waiting to see what the tech choice is going to be from IG, uh, from Moose here. IGN, that's the guy who's on chat now. No tech, okay. So he's just going to go straight to Assault Pack. Well, he's reconsidering. I mean, the thing is, like, he doesn't have any vision on his opponent, because you'll notice he actually retired the base friendly there. Looks like Fighter and Gunship coming out from him now. Uh, in which case, we'll probably see that production upgrade come out soon. Oh, he cancels it. He's, he's unsure, clearly. He's as unsure as we are. A game though, meanwhile, going for Soul Chip Fab. Uh, and he could actually go for second PC first, but he doesn't have that much scouting, right? He, he saw that it's SC first, but he doesn't know about the follow up, so A game's gonna be going for. Uh, A game's gonna be going for Soul Chip Tech instead. You like the cancel? Yeah, cancel culture, man. <laughs> Let's see, Assault Chip Fab coming out about halfway through, but still no sign of a PC. Well, actually, he is kind of saving up for it, though, isn't he? No, he's not, because he'd have to go ref mode first. How to win. <laughs> Cancel everything you make. A game having a little fight here with this sand skimmer. He could actually win this if he uses the base printer heal. Looks like he'll win it anyway. Pretty clutch there. He's going to take another fight here as well. This one, this one, he's a little bit behind on. But this skin could come over, it would be death for- Oh, another one spawns out of the PC, right? That's gonna give him the damage he needs to win this. Actually, he is gonna bring this skin over. And uh, Moose gonna succeed, though, in scouting out the carrier to- Well, is he, though? Because actually, it's just popped up, you see that? Like, literally just now. And so, Moose may have seen that, but he may not have. That was a little bit close. The tech was done, though, so... It's a little bit harder to see these things on Galzian because the unit, like, the, the module pops up rather than, um, like, opening. So for Coalition, you see the light immediately, but... By the way, really nice base runner heal there. I love the way Aegon keeps this guy right behind the dune there. It's not gonna get damaged, you know, while he's doing the heal. And Moose is never gonna push on that, so it buys him time. He's got all the skims here now. Still, it's gonna be difficult for him to, like, get this guy out onto the extraction zone. And by the way, Moose here with another SC, so he is going for... He is going for that extraction quick as you like, and he's going for rail fabs. So that tells me maybe he did see the assault chip uh, module there. It was visible, like I said, it was just hard to see, so I wasn't sure, but looks like he probably did. But Moose popping up onto three base very quickly here, and A game is getting a PC as well. But again, Moose, like, the tech came after this SC was done, so this is very, very fast from him. All he did really was build, like, a couple of, uh, a couple of LAVs in the meantime. 
PC just chilling here. Probably move it out. I, I might actually move the carrier, but I guess I'm not really sure. Assault pack done for Moose now. Now he did have that carrier production upgrade, I guess, to be fair. That is an investment he made, so obviously he can build quite a couple of LEDs here. And he'd love to stop this extract if he can. He's gonna micro these guys best he can, but one of them is gonna fall pretty quickly anyway, so the sand skimmers have the advantage here. Um, they're gonna lose guys, obviously, but they should win this fight. The question is, can these guys get in here in time? And I think that they will. Base Runner Heal is still available, though. Uh-oh. Uh. Yeah, he could use Base Runner Heal here to try and keep these uh, Sand Skimmers alive, but I think he's just gonna rush the Extract, and that's probably the right move. But I'm unfortunate Focus Fire here, he's actually not shooting, but, um... At this point, he probably just wants to try and keep these guys alive. Base Runner probably will use the Heal ability now, just to buy a bit of time, and maybe he'll actually even survive? Look at this, because, like... Obviously, that Assault Ship is coming. LAV's gonna start focusing on that Skim, they will kill it. That was a nice move, though, to just buy even a little bit more time. The Assault Ship is in the area now, he's got Armor 1. And he may actually... He may actually just survive here, like, this base runner might not die. Well, this Assault Ship is getting low already, actually. By the way, someone donated bits? I've never seen that happen on this channel before. <laughs> Interceptor Fab on the queue now for uh, A game. Looks like he's gonna cancel, though. Now, he sees the rails, right? This is, I think... Maybe an unfortunate cancel, because, like, Interceptor Fab could be nice. But he has a uh, Siege Cruiser Fabrication done. LAVs, though, keeping up the pressure, they are gonna kill this base runner. And A-game really needs more assault chips, but it's tough because obviously these, uh, these rails are just gonna kill these assault chips. So this is actually a really nice army comp for Moose. And he's gonna go for Mag Excel as well. Oh, looks like he's gonna cancel that, actually. So he goes into damage too then. But again, like, A-game obviously didn't have any upgrades on these, on these skims here. So he builds them because he needs, like, a, something to tank for these assault chips. I know that sounds silly, but this is something that March Warden, like, a theory March Warden was kind of promoting, uh, earlier. And I, I really kind of agree with it myself. You know, the skims uh, facilitate these soul chips in a way that you wouldn't really think they do. But, like, they're just so under level, right? Because they have no upgrades, and obviously LAVs, the unit that you can upgrade the most. Uh oh. Ugh, get this guy over the hill. Yike. Okay, he's barely gonna live there. Um, but yeah, he's so under level against these, these LAVs here that, like, the skims are really gonna be. Like, it's difficult to get value out of them like you'd like to, so. I mean, he can probably take fights with, like, 30% less numbers or something and still win. And so, you know, if the numbers are even, which, like, obviously he's got that production upgrade, he does pretty well at this point. The Siege Cruiser's out, though, and it's going to use its first barrage here down on these, uh, railguns here. I think he cancelled it, though, by giving the move orders. This is maybe a little bit ineffective. By the way, d do note, though, of course, Boost is also moving these artifacts out. That's why this fight is starting to branch out to, you know, a huge, um... This, this fight is starting to branch out to kind of a huge, like, uh, range, right? Like, the front line is massive. Oh, I see, okay, so the barrage is just, like, two bursts, right? But yeah, he's trying to stop these extracts as well if he can, but it doesn't look like he really can. But it, it seems like Moose is gonna move the, um... It seems like Moose is going to move the, uh, front line away here. He doesn't want to keep pressuring, so he's gonna back away. And yeah, you can queue orders with, uh, with shift. Yeah. I do it with air units all the time so that they won't dock, but it's just useful in general. If you queue, like, a barrage and then shift and then right-click to move, then it'll do the barrage and then back away. And I actually did notice this. This is, like, what A-game does all the time. But A-game actually getting in behind his opponent here with the skims now. They're probably gonna be forfeit, but... Because these LAVs will kill them, but they're gonna do... You would hope quite a bit of damage in the meantime. Mark target is being used here, so these... These LAVs are going to do, like, massive damage, and the skins are going to fight them. I don't think that's the right move. He should just finish the kill. He's got two kills almost done here. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, because these LAVs with a huge uh, damage advantage, obviously, with those upgrades, but also they've got the mark target from the railguns. They're just going to instantly chunk these, these uh, sand skimmers, so... If you could have finished these two salvager kills, I think that'd be pretty impactful, but... Did you know Siege Cruisers have anti-air? Uh, maybe you're right. Just keep him alive because now you're here. I don't know though, just like killing off the, the salvagers was just like, it's so close, it feels like it would have been worth it, but... Anyway, yeah, Siege Cruisers do have a very mild amount of anti-air. Here come the Siege Cruisers though, first barrage is on the eco. Second barrage being used as well. Um, it's not actually where the rails are though, the rails are gonna be here to stop the extract, but... They're not supported by these LAVs at all, and so the Sand Skimmers are just totally behind them now. 
I mean, yeah, he'll get the artifacts, but this is not good. Now, to be fair, Moose has gotten two extractions of his own, though, so his carrier is pretty decently powered at this point, but... This should be all of these rails dead. Now, Moose has full ups, actually. Oh, no, he doesn't have AP Feb. Yes, these guys have no armor either, so they're just gonna get shredded. Down they go. This fight here, though, is gonna be interesting, though, because the LAVs are up on top of the, uh, the Sand Skimmers, and you know that they have the higher DPS. If they could get the kills here, they could maybe kill the Siege Cruisers, but this barrage is actually pretty good. Sand Skimmers are gonna get in here on time. It looks like those Siege Cruisers are gonna be alive. That's really, really crucial for A-Gamers. Those Siege Cruisers are very important to him at this stage. And I, I saw this as well, I didn't mention it, but Tack Bomber Fab actually on the queue now for Moose. And it is done. And A-Game might notice that there's air, but generally like at this stage of the game, we're a little bit less diligent about checking for like tech, right? Yeah, if he had seen air, I'm sure he'd be clicking on Missile Ship Fab here. Yeah, barraging your own units like freaking Gallipoli, right? <laughs> Triple Barrage comes out of the eco, and Moose really has to yield the position. He's got to get this uh, support cruiser out of here. Well, wow, look at his positioning, actually. He's not really getting hit by this barrage. <laughs> Cheeky. Well, maybe that's just A-game missing, to be honest. Sandskimmer's going to clean out the space runner on this side. He wants to grab this artifact before he dies. It's probably not likely, though. Probably not likely. Did I just say that? So down he goes. And this base runner from A-game here going to pick this up, then. Again, though, still on uh, two base production with, um, obviously he's got the carrier building, you know, heavy units and air, but he doesn't have a third PC yet, so. The fact he's not floating means he has been diversifying into tech. He's been building these air units, obviously, but, uh. Am I seeing this icon here is the same? That's gotta be a mistake, because obviously the Coalition Bomber's icon is different. Huh. Curious, things that you never knew before. I'm a little worried about these siege cruisers, though. They're just sort of chilling out here. <laughs> this support cruiser is like eventually gonna die here. He needs to move. <laughs> right? I mean, oh gosh, <laughs> 218 left. Yeah, this Gal Siege just camping out the eco is so freaking annoying for Moose. I mean, he's got to do something about it, right? But the thing is, these guys are very alone here. Like, if these LAVs just ran in, like, and look, he sees the skimmer blob now. I mean, he could he could run in here and kill the the siege, but oh, the bomber could do it too. Interceptors are out though. And again, I was saying, like, probably A-Game would have gone for Missile Ship if he had seen the, uh, the Interceptor tech, so he, or the Strike Fighter and Gunship, so he must not know. This is just something he's getting just to get it. But the Bombers are in now, there's three of them. Down goes one, down goes two. This Bomber here maybe could dock if he catches it. No, he doesn't see it, so... Ooh. Targeting Jammer plus ALM is bad times for, uh, for... Bad times for the Galzian, I think that's that's for sure. But LEVs are gonna boost in now, and again, these skims are not here. There's like one assault ship to cover. And it's gotten sundered, right? No, it didn't. But the LEVs can still kill it. <gasps> the, oh no! Oh, they have an order to attack like a unit that's like mega far away. This is so bad for Moose. He's not shooting at all with these LEVs. Ah! <laughs> okay, okay, he finally catches it. <laughs> gonna chunk that siege cruiser then, he'll catch the assault ship too. A-game, though, still just harassing that base on this side, and he's done a lot of damage to the other one, but his army is very thin now. And without that third PC, he doesn't really rebuild very quickly, so losing those siege cruisers is not really acceptable. Base runner getting it dunked here right before it drops the artifact out. That's very clutch as well for Moose. Keeps the scoreline at 2-1 then. Moose is a little bit ahead here. This ALM here gonna go down. Base has been evacuated, but all the salves are dead anyway. So Moose has big problems on the side, he's got to go back and deal with it, but A-game has this massive, like, army disadvantage to deal with. Although, I mean, to be fair, it's getting smaller every day, I mean, maybe he'll be okay here, but... These LEVs, uh-oh, gonna get hit by EMP in a big way, it catches like half of them, and the debt packs follow up and they kill them! Oh, so good from A-game! That is like the coolest play I've seen in a long time. Barrage gonna follow up on the back line too here, so they're gonna get hit on the, on the way out. <laughs> what a play, man. <laughs> wow, with armor 2 on these guys, they don't take a lot of damage from that barrage, though. That was sick. <laughs> yes, I like that. How could I not? Oh, man. Targeting Jammer deployed to try and stop these assault ships. In a very good position, I must say. Bomber's gonna come out then as well to try and finish it off. What kind of anti-air is there here for, uh, for Moose? It doesn't have SC anti-air. He doesn't have Missile Battery Fab yet either, so he doesn't really have much anti-air to speak of at all, to be honest. 
LEVs chunk off this assault chip here. And, like, the LEV uh, number, though, for Moose has been thinned so much by that attack there, right? And A-game is getting the upgrades, too. This is what I wanted to point out. He's got another PC? No, he doesn't. So he's still on two PCs, so he's not really going to be able to match LEV production terribly well. But he's getting the upgrades, and with the numbers being thinned so much, like, you can see a world pretty soon where A-game is going to be able to compete with these uh, LEVs from his opponent. Not to mention, you know, they do do anti-air, but not very much. Uh, so, like, they're, they're getting damaged. They're all very low. This kind of war of attrition is working out well for A-game. And this is a lot of assault chips. I mean, what is Moose supposed to do to counter them? I guess he's got railguns, uh, he's got the bomber, but it's tricky. And if the bomber really needs to be used against Siege, too. He can't use it on anything else, really. Wow, what a swing. Like, this game is really back and forth. I mean, like, you know every caster wants to say that because you want the games to be exciting, but this is just crazy. <laughs> I'm really glad we chose to cast these, man. Moose needs honor guards? Yeah, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> Siege gonna start hitting that carrier now. And the direct fire, of course, was made pretty powerful. So, I mean, that carrier's not, like, in danger of getting, like, killed right now, but it is gonna have to back away. I think Moose's idea is that his carrier will, you know, hold off the assault chips for him, but I, I don't really know. Meanwhile, LEV's coming in for backstab. There are assault chips to cover here, though, so, I mean... He this is not really good trading. Players go in on assault chips too often, I think. Yeah, in fact, yeah, look at this. He, he's losing a lot of guys on this side now. It's like LEVs can kill assault chips, but they don't usually. They really shouldn't. So, like, it's risky to go in for that kind of trade. Interceptor's gonna try to complete some kills on the back line. They're gonna get one here. Maybe a second, but this guy's still alive for now. Assault chips coming in on the second base for Moose as well. Or maybe you call this third, I'm not really sure. But the Strike Fighter's launched, so this is fair game. The Bomber can come out. Doesn't kill a Siege Cruiser in one hit, though. Oh, he's got more. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, he needs more than that. But he, he's got them, so... This Bomber should finish off the kill there. Third Bomber, not gonna be able to kill this guy on his own, but the LEVs could finish it, so he may want to just drop the bomb on him. Yep, there it is. LEVs can boost in now and try and get past this Assault Ship. Uh-oh, kinda falling asleep at the wheel here. He really wants to boost in and just get the kill there. Strike Fighters or Interceptors that has come in to try and finish off the uh, bombers, but they do get shot down, so... I think A-game only losing one, though! He doesn't kill the Siege Cruiser! Oh! That's crippling, man. He was so close. <laughs> this carrier really low, actually. I mean, like... Again, Moose is not really in danger of dying here, but... Y you know, you've gotta respect it eventually. This is a lot of damage he's taken. Power 3 coming up for both players, so... That's quite... That's quite symmetrical. But it's A-game with clear control of the field now, and though he can't just kill off his opponent entirely right now, he's getting close. Definitely with the advantage advantageous position, though. I think, like, that's pretty obvious to say. And quite a lot of RUs, too. Holy goodness. Skim damage, too, might be a good call, but this is the stage of the game where we start running low on, on CUs, so... Oh, what the heck? <laughs> the bombers killed off another siege gear. I didn't see that. I guess that makes sense, though. They, they, he does lose one, though, for it. Uh, but killing those siege crews is kind of like a must for uh, for Moose. He doesn't really have a choice. Like, he's got to do it. So you can see he's up against, like, a hard place here. He does have missile battery fab now, finally, but he hasn't built any. Uh-oh, and Moose is going to find a, a window where these railguns are exposed here. Siege cruiser may be going to kill an uh, uh, interceptor here. That's an interesting aesthetic. You saw the, the bullets and the siege crews are, like, fire following him there. But the skins are in here too, so it's kind of academic anyway. Oh, what the? Oh, hey, look at that. The bomber's still doing their still doing their job, clearly. He manages to kill off that base runner. And he's got anti-air coverage with this AA turret, in a sense. So he's not, like, really in threat of losing the bomber at this point. As well as the missile battery comes out now, but... This base, though, definitely going to be forfeit. Obviously, the main base is not worth much right now, so this is really important. Like, you can't lose that. And actually, I haven't realized this until just now, but this is something about Torian Crater, the new one, isn't it? That, like, if you get if you get spread thin like this, right? Like, when you move into the late game, you have to cover second and third, which are far apart. So it's kind of a bigger front than we're used to in the late game. It's kind of an interesting, interesting deal there. Yeah, no, at this point, Moose is pretty, pretty solidly behind, I would say. And A-game has full control of the field. 
The question is just can Moose make something Hail Mary work here, really? That's what it would take at this point. He needs to get his support cruisers together as well, because they need to be healing each other up here. But his carrier is low, too. The thing is, if he moves his carrier out on this side, he just has nothing to defend. So I think he really can't. And actually, the strike, uh, the Interceptor is just going to come in. They're going to take losses for this, but they just want to kill off that uh, that support cruiser. They do catch it, so they lose one, I think. But that's, that's pretty acceptable losses. They're actually going to dump missiles on the carrier here now. To be fair though, they can like, they can really damage this thing right now. But this is what I was, yeah, this is what I was about to say, is that like, once the... Once the Interceptors launch like that, and like, waste the missiles on the carrier, the Bombers are just gonna launch, right? Let's see, does he go for- Oh uh oh Bruce has really gotta get these Bombers out of here. Looks like they're just gonna use the missiles on the carrier, though. And at this point, I think they're out, so they have to dock. Yeah, they're gonna dock here. So this is a window for the Bombers to move, then, and these Siege Cruisers are on the line. That's what he wants to get. He knows where they are, too, so this- he's gotta be going now, cause like, obviously, once his carrier- or once his opponent docks the air- yeah, here we go. Siege Cruiser's not splitting, actually, they're kinda moving into the choke, in fact. Oh. Yeah, I mean, obviously, anytime you have more than three, uh, you can't- you can't dock them all, right? This- this Siege Cruiser's low, it's just that there's nothing- he would have to, like, sacrifice something to go in on that Siege Cruiser. There's just nothing left to sacrifice, frankly. It's, it's all gone already. And that air is going to be ready again in a moment, so it's not like... It's not like these windows for Moose are very big that he can use those bombers effectively. Getting that Siege Cruiser very good, in other words, but it's just probably not enough. This carrier actually is so low, I mean, he could die to the ints right now. Let alone, the other thing you got to realize is that A-Game's carrier is getting powered up, and once it reaches 5, that Cruiser still will come out immediately on the carrier and pretty much just kill it. Uh, unless it's unless it's not low like this, but yeah, well this is for sure. He can't take a fight with A game's carrier, but A game with the big speed advantage. He's playing Galzian, obviously. Interceptor's actually gonna kind of dive in here, so it looks like they want to they want to dump on the railguns. Perhaps is what they're going for here. I might just dump on this carrier though, because I think if A game just right clicks on him, he'll die. And even if he doesn't, uh, he has in 20 seconds just the game winning move with that uh, you know missile barrage. So. You saw it clear when you just right-clicked it. Yeah, that's what I mean. But I thought you were going to right-click them all on the carrier. To be fair, though, I mean, I don't know what I'm criticizing, because this game is definitely over. Like, yeah, he lost the Interceptors, but everything is dead here, so... Don't really know what I'm criticizing, exactly. <laughs> Missile Barrage is done, so there it is. And a game with that powered-up carrier is going to put all the power into weapons. And, uh... All the power is in armor for Moose, so obviously he doesn't win this fight. And it is going to go down, I believe, to the carrier. And A-game takes the game. What a freaking game, though. I mean... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, obviously. If you didn't know this, uh, level 5 weapons actually doesn't... Level 5 weapons doesn't actually make your carrier do more damage against other carriers, interestingly, because they have too much armor. But it makes them do a lot of freaking damage against ground units, that's for sure. But against carriers, um... The damage goes from probably like 11 to, I think it's like 25 or so. Um, well yeah, plus 250% it says, doesn't it? But yeah, so like they do huge damage to like armored units and stuff like that, but they won't really kill carriers anymore. Well yeah, because it is armor piercing, but like, it's not that armor piercing, right? <laughs> I guess actually, look at this, Galzian has 20, so it would do more damage against Galzian carriers. Anyway, wh whatever. The point is, like, that play, like, the, the freaking Scorch Mark is still on the ground from it. With the EMP and then the debt packs, like, I'm still geeking out about that. That was insane. Like, that honestly may have won A-game the game here. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Freaking madness. Let's load up game two, shall we? <laughs> I'm messaging someone on Discord while I'm streaming, that's funny. Somebody who's in the stream chat, but does not type. Well, I'll answer the question anyway, what do honor guards do? They're like, they're like a giant railgun, but, so railguns are like anti-armored units, right? But honor guards do anti uh, area of effect, so they can hit strikecraft as well. 
So pretty much railguns are, yeah, railguns are good against armored units, uh, but they, they lack DPS, but they do good damage against armor. So, you know, use them against carriers, use against armored units, and they have huge range too. But honor guards are uh, good against everything pretty much, and they've even got an upgrade that gives them anti-air. But their only problem is that they're they're very big. They have to turn to shoot at things, so they can you know can be outpositioned. They're very expensive, so you can't just lose them. Uh, and then obviously they don't have a huge amount of DPS either. They actually, well, with, with the with the railgun damage changes, it's possible that heavy rails have less DPS than honor guards still, like with equivalent numbers. But I'm pretty sure, at least the way that used to work, is that honor guards have less DPS than uh, than railguns do. But they obviously have such a big impact because they have a really high damage per shot and they do, you know, area of effect damage, so... If your opponent's, like, pushing you with your car uh, with his carrier, you don't want honor guards, you actually want to have railguns. But if they have a bunch of LEVs, they have a bunch of rails, they have cruisers, whatever, honor guards just always a good... Always a good call in those cases. By the way, this is a rail rush from A-game, I think. I mean, I haven't seen A-game rail rush in a long time, but... Hey, there you are. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen A-game rail rush in a long time, but, uh... This shouldn't be allowed to watch for Bozo. <laughs> 18 plus rail action. <laughs> Gotta get your fleet cap up there, buddy. I I've done this many times. I've become learned in the ways of rail rushing. His RU count is definitely pretty low here, though, so... Oh, targeting jammer. Pretty good, actually. Still gonna get this LEV, though, so this is a very nice early trade for A-game. Obviously, the way that these rail rushes work is often that they snowball off of, you know, Strikecraft superiority, so... What a position, though. Like, he can't get it until he comes off the terrain here. But yeah, so like getting an early trade like that is actually a pretty big deal. But it is carrier production coming out from Moose here. A game with that EMP off the ALM. A lot of people don't know this, but you can't give an order while a unit is EMP'd. I think it's really stupid, but. So yeah, the guides just like kept running forward because they had gotten EMP'd there. That's pretty unfortunate, but it'll happen. A game might want to consider backing away right now, though, because at this point he can still back away. Uh, but if he goes for rail fab, he really probably can't. Yeah, second PC is coming out. Um. So he's just looking to get Strikecraft superiority for now. He's got the RUs finally for Railfab. He doesn't have it on the queue yet though, right? So obviously like... At this point he's at the crossroads where he can choose to back away and then go for ref mode after this. And because he has 2 PC production, he won't die to the LEVs. Uh, or he can go for Rail Rush. Um, and then he can try and, you know, trade out against the LEVs. But like, this is kind of both of them. Which is never really where you want to be. Yeah, yeah, that's, I, I kind of agree. Because, like, uh, he, he won the early trade, which is good, but then just no rail fab came out yet. And his opponent already has the LED production upgrade, so I think he just wants to back away. So if I were him, I would I would cancel armor here. I mean, it's too late now, but... Um, and he's going for raiding too. Okay, if you're going to attack, you at least need to get rail fab at some point, man. But I would cancel the armor upgrade. I would just go for ref mode here and then rely on having the bigger numbers to go back onto 3 base. And I think you can play it that way. I think it'll work. I never do myself because I go for rail fab so early that I don't really have time to make that call. But like, if it's against you know LEV spam like this, you can totally go for uh, you can totally go for ref mode, right? And if he had AVs, you would have to get tech, I suppose. But in fact, I should experiment with that because that might even be like stronger than what I currently do. Anyway, rail fab starting for a game, but uh, it's it's tricky because like rail fab is already starting for Moose as well, and the support cruiser is out, so Moose is on two base now. I mean, admittedly, no RUs on this second base, but uh, he doesn't really need them. Upgrades are even right now, and Moose has the high ground, so he's going to win the Sandskimmer trade once again. The second PC has just come out, so he even has the numbers pretty much even, I think. You can check the units tab here. 11 to 12, yeah, so he's got the numbers, uh, and pretty soon he'll have a lot of numbers here. Well, no, no, he won't, because the second PC is out, right? But pretty soon he'll have rails is the thing. And so A-game is going to go for assault rails, that's what he needs. He's going to start building them. But the railguns are already going to be out for Moose. In like 10 seconds, he'll start building them. And so, you know, that will allow him to bully the assault railguns out. And in the meantime, he's just mining on two base. He's just chilling here. So this is this is quite bad for A-game. This is not at all where he wants this game to be. He's got the money for a railgun. I'd love to see him build it right now. Especially because he's Sobon. And Sobon railguns are just the coolest unit in the game. Other than Sobon VCs. Oh my gosh. But... <laughs> Yeah, so these soul rails are out now, so this lets him trade pretty much pretty much infinitely with the uh, LABs. He has to be worried, I guess, about targeting jammer, but... 
Yeah, right, yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll just be out of here. <laughs> no, unfortunately, there's no hiding the shame here, so the rails are out. When a soul rail gets killed instantly, that's really unfortunate for A-game. Yeah, and at this point, he really just has to back away. I don't think there's anything he can do, but... The thing is, like, he's he's gone so late into the rail rush here that if he goes for ref mode now, I think he'll just die. So I don't think he can back away. Basically, like, the only way back into the game now for A-game is that he takes a really, really good trade somehow and manages to buy at least enough that he can go back to ref mode without dying. But if it's, you know, like, ideally he buys so much that he's actually able to, uh, you know, complete the rail rush. Turning Jammer, really nice position here. Yeah, talking about good trades, this is... This is what I mean by good trade, but you know, the other way. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna trade out a bunch of those uh, skims. He's up on the Assault Railguns, he's gonna finish them off too. Maybe overcommitting just a little bit here is Moose. He's probably gonna want to boost out, actually, because like, obviously now the skims are on high ground. Uh, oh dear, he's actually... Yeah, he, he should have boosted to get out of there. Well, maybe he didn't have it. Yeah, some of them had boosted already. But ref mode is done, at least. I mean, A-game's not dead yet, but... Like, Moose now, he can go just LAV spam totally, um, and just, like, with rails on the back of it. Or he can go for air. I mean, like, air would be really nice, because, like, he's on two base and his opponent isn't, so... You know that always makes air a good choice. Uh, he can go for a carrier rushing, actually, and just, like, bring the fight now to A-game. There's a lot of options that he's got here, and A-game really has it all to do, so... He hasn't lost PCs, though, and so it could be worse. Like, if you lose PCs, it's just game over, but, um... Yeah, if he wanted to fall back off the rail rush, he probably should have done it earlier. Like, before he got rail fab at all. Uh... <laughs> yeah, remarkably, he does make mistakes. <laughs> Sometimes it's easy to forget. Triple production upgrade coming out from Moose here, though, so it looks like this is gonna be LAV spam. Um, and for some reason I really wanted to click on AV tech, but I don't think it's actually that good for him right now. If you can get vehicle damage too as well on the LAVs, obviously that's going to be huge. Honestly, A-game should go for honor guards if he can find a window, but first he has to hold this defense, because obviously if you try to tech up while your opponent is pushing on you, usually a bad time. Um, and the LAVs, this is what they want to do, they just want to get a little bit of damage on the eco, force him to get off of that second, uh, third base there. Carry prediction upgrade is done for Moose here. And vehicle damage is coming out for Moose. That's exactly what I wanted to see. He does have some LDMs on that third base as well. Uh, if you can get a support cruiser on there, that'd be great too, because obviously if you're ahead on an economy from your opponent, you're always in a good place. Yeah, it's honor guards. He is going to go for it. So yeah, like honor guards are just tough to get to because it's, you know, when you're teching up while your opponent's pushing, it's really difficult. But um, honestly, like look at, look at everything on the field here. Honor guards would be so good against this. Pretty good timing that someone asked about how honor guards work, huh? <laughs> Let's be careful here, though, targeting Jammer. Yeah, that's exactly it. He's running right through it. Ah! Oh, no. Well, he can't retreat now. He sees it, so he's just going to run right in. Oh, dear. Ooh. Well, it, okay, he is going to get up onto this position where the, the high ground is disputed, at least. He'll kill off all the railguns here. But the upgrade disparity still goes in Moose's favor, and he has the numbers in a huge margin. So this is going to take the pressure of the rails off, but if he loses the Strikecraft superiority, I don't know how he ever comes back. He needs to pull all these guys back to the carrier now. Uh-oh, yeah. Ooh. Yike. He's going to drop the depth packs. You know, we saw that work for him last game. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to want to cancel this guy. That PC is dead as nails. Doesn't get the cancel off. He's not going to get the cancel off on this other PC either, to be honest. Uh, er... Wait, what am I saying? He could. But he, he, he may lose it, is what I'm saying. Like, Moose actually is backing away here, but he's giving him too much respect. He should drive in there and kill this PC, because he can take it if he wants it. If you didn't know, by the way, units that are queued up, you spend the cost right when you queue them. And then if the PC dies while the unit is still queued, you, you just lose that money. It doesn't come back, so... So you need to be careful to cancel units when, when PCs are close to death, basically. Cool, this should never have to worry about that, of course, because if your carrier dies, you die, but, uh... <laughs> First honor guard is on the way. Remarkably, A-game hasn't given up yet. Uh, he should do a little quick drop and get power one, at least, but... This many LAVs is pretty uncontrollable. That targeting jammer was just insane.
using some Cs for the depth packs there, always just a little bit of a yike as well. He needs to drop off these uh, these selves too, right? Because that power one is, yeah, well, it doesn't really matter. He's gonna GG out, he sees the writing on the wall finally. Um, and that is gonna be the game then. Rail rush, unsuccessful. And I am very disappointed. <laughs> Somebody just sent me a DM, it's just a video that says monkey backflip. You mean like your control groups? No. You notice I put the LEVs on three so that I could jump to them, but... The the green player's carrier is always on tilde, and the red player's carrier I put on group one. But it doesn't show what groups the um, the players had during the... It doesn't, it doesn't show what groups the players had during the game, so I can't see that. So yeah, here's one, and then I can do F. Tilde F. You should watch that video, it's life-changing. Hmm. I think I know who this is now. <laughs> maybe later, maybe later. <laughs> LEV Fab starting for Moose now. This is going to be the same build as he did, uh... Well, as he did in the last game, in fact. Because obviously he does have one on RU's here, so this is going to be LEV spam. He's got his carry into kind of a funny position here. Uh, these guys... So... This is actually something I think a lot of new players don't know. The, the salvagers have to drop off on the edge of the carrier. So there's a hitbox like right around here basically that they can drop off on. You saw them move over to it, right? So if they're underneath the carrier, they have to move to the outside of it because, you know, they're, they're pathing to the closest uh, hitbox, right? So they move to the outside of the carrier and then they drop and then they start mining again. And so this is where they want to be, where they don't have to move hardly at all when they uh, like drop off. But if they're inside the carrier, they have to move out. And sometimes, you know, uh, you can set things up in a bad position where they have to keep doing that every time and you, you lose some efficiency. So just try and position your carrier to where the salvagers are on the edge of it. This is actually even still not perfect because you can see these guys turning. Clearly they have to move like a couple centimeters in this direction before they can drop off, right? See that? So that's not actually, that's not quite ideal yet, but like, see how A-game is doing it? These guys can drop off immediately. So he's positioned it as close to the second base as he can, and just so that these guys are on the edge of the, uh, the edge of the carrier hitbox there. Show this game to Orb. Will do. I'll link him the vault or something. Do you, do you want him to like learn? Do you want him to learn the carrier uh, hitbox thing, or is there something about the build in this game? By the way, no tech yet for a game. Moose is going for uh, LED build still, but the production upgrade isn't there yet. You are kidding? Never kid. Oh, I see. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, it looks like it's a double BR play here for Moose again, but he hasn't gotten the production upgrade yet. Okay, yeah, so he's going to go into AV Fab. Well, that's interesting because he still only has one guy on our use here, so this is very, very late AVs. And Soul Chip Fab, meanwhile, coming out for A game, he is on two base fluently. So the problem, right, is that when you go for this few salvagers, you kind of are expecting you get the carry production upgrade and the LAVs get you pressure on the field. There's no pressure here for Moose except for artifacts. Um, so, <clears throat> I don't know, this, this is a little tricky, I think he's just gonna get behind in Eco. What did you miss? Uh, absolutely nothing. There was definitely not a game that A-game tried to rail rush. Definitely not. And it certainly didn't not work for him either, so. <laughs> we kept 45 coming out from A-game, no? And you'd expect to see that PC once he feels safe, but for now he's probably expecting LED spam then, if there's gonna be this many. So he'll be... Uh, trying to trying to just kind of hold these LEVs off of him. I mean, ideally he would actually manage to push out across the midfield because obviously his opponent is extracting at this time, but he can't really do it with just like one PC and skins. So once the Soul Chip Fab is done, maybe we'll see him start moving out there. No upgrades from uh, Moose, but it looks like A-game is going for Armor 1. That'll be done just momentarily. See, that's the thing, like, still no production upgrade from Moose, right? So, like, clearly he, uh, He's not gonna have the push on these on these strike craft. But he's he's getting it now. He's got AV Fab at this point. That's the thing, like you don't usually see a Galzian player able to push with one PC like that, right? So Uh-oh, turning jam is in a good spot though. LEV's gonna try to capitalize on it, but the dunes are a little bit awkward here. Skin's holding ground where they can still get shot though. That's always a bit of a bit of a yike there. He's gonna kill the targeting jammer. I mean he doesn't really need to, so. But he does get it, which is kind of nice for him. Second one comes out though, and that's that two-piece, uh, two-piece base burner. 
Two base front or play we're talking about. <laughs> Sometimes I just can't speak, I don't know. Armored Units 2 is on the way for A-game already though, uh, and he's got the uh, the Sand Skimmers, you know, he didn't take any losses, I don't think. Yeah, he hasn't lost any units yet, and now he's got the Assault Chips. And like, this, these LEDs could kill this Assault Chip, but they certainly can't kill the Assault Chip and the Sand Skimmers, right? So this base runner here, I don't expect will extract. A-game gonna lose a couple units on the on the run-up though. Those LEDs don't have the Assault Pack, that was just kiting, but A-game doesn't have rating, so... 33%? There's no way. Doesn't it move it from 150 to 1... or from 140 to 150? I'm only just realizing this tooltip must be out of date. AVs are here though, but they don't have any armor. and These guys are armor too right now. Targeting jammers can make something work here, but I don't think there's really any other way that Moose wins this fight, so he probably just needs to back away. He's got high ground to be fair, so he's trading okay with damage, but uh, yeah, he really needs to use targeting jammers to, to fix this. Smoke deployed as well to just try and get out of there. <clears throat> this is gonna be tough though. Uh, he has the two targeting jammers available, so he's got he's got options here. But um, it's gonna be a little bit tough for him to uh, get these base runners out of here. An A game, obviously, with armor two done on those assault ships, he's not really worried about the AVs killing them. So these these units are not like invulnerable or something, but they're they're pretty pretty tough to kill at this time. Targeting jammer needs to come out. Okay, there it is. Because this base runner is gonna die. That's fine. Down goes one of them. And yes, he is still on base. I was actually gonna say, like, A-game should be on three base, but... Well, his opponent's on one, so he's kind of okay here. Heavy Vehicles Armor 1 coming out now for Moose. I mean, that must be the reason why he doesn't have any armor, it's just because he's low on money. Okay, this is a fight that A-game can't take, though, because obviously he's fighting up the high ground here. Actually, he loses two Assault Chips. That's quite good for Moose. That was without the Targeting Jammer being deployed, too. LEV's coming in for a bit of a backstab as well. And by the way, I wanted to mention this. This guy is in such a nice position. I don't know who's piloting this carrier. They must be freaking blind if they can't see him. He's right there. But uh, he is actually out of sensors range, so Agin can't see this. And he might be getting the blip. No, no, he's not, because he's the green player, so we'd know. Yeah, so he doesn't have any idea that his opponent has just been scouting him this entire time. Assault Chip's gonna come back home to defend. Uh... And so are the AVs, so both players kind of having similar thoughts that way. It's kind of the dynamic you'd expect, because obviously the armored assaults are uh, slower than the LAVs, so they're not a very good candidate for the backstab. Um, but they do counter the sand skimmers, which are faster than the assault chips, so they're a very good candidate for the defenders. And uh, let's see, sand skimmer rating coming up for A game here, but it does have that air tech, which is what Moose is talking about. For some reason, I never saw his air tech. Okay, that's actually a bit of a yike. It's probably because, like, like say right here, there's a lot of reflection. And it's a little bit hard to see. You really have to like, you have to zoom in on these carriers to like see that stuff. Otherwise, it's very, very easy to miss it. Also, A game's colors just happen to be like pretty much the same colors as the air techs. So it's a little bit hard to see it. it sounds funny, but like Garmalator actually changed his colors to be like this uh, dark gray for that purpose of hiding air tech. That was like his whole his whole goal. Of, of coloring his, uh, his carrier that way. Moose's LEV is a little bit trapped here. They want to find damage, but they're just going to find... Well, they do actually kill a salvager there. I mean, Moose is on, on two base right now, so this is actually... Well, he's got the SC ready, but... This is actually kind of good for him that he can, like, kill a couple salves, but if, is it worth all this LAV that he's going to die? Maybe not. And these guys, I don't think, can really escape. He probably wants to get up on this ground, uh, high ground here. Yep. He will do that. He's chunking. Oh yeah, and I noticed that as well. So BC fab on the queue for Moose here, but Agim is going for uh, Agim is going for precision bomber already, and so Savon so BCs would they even really fit in this? in this scenario at all? Like, I'm trying to think. Because, like, obviously, uh, you're just gonna get circles run around you by sand skimmers if your opponent is investing into that. We all know that already. Um, but, like, yeah, they, they can kill assault ships, but railguns could do that job just fine. I think that BCs are not really great here, to be honest. Um, and that's without the air tech, mind you. But with air tech, yeah, this could be, this could be really yike for, uh, for Moose. A-game might reveal it though, because he may assume that Moose had already seen it, as Moose was saying in chat, like he, he didn't see it this game for some reason. 
Here comes that probe too, I mean, so that probe should see it. And actually, uh, on Galzine, you can scout bomber tech as well. It looks like this. Whereas before, it's like a, a different shade of gray and it's kind of like covered over. Oh, I see, this is why orb should- okay, right. <laughs> I'm- I'm starting to get it now. I'm starting to get it now. Well, calibration's not even a coalition tech, but no, it doesn't. Do you mean do you mean mag accelerator? Because it does not either. AV's gonna ward off a little skimmer backstab right here. Both players respecting each other clearly, but it's Moose who's in his base here. Now he did clearly see air now because he's got that turret post up, but he probably really needs to go into missile battery fab and you know get. Because otherwise he's just gonna be stuck in his base forever, right? Um, and then not to mention, like, when he sees that there's bombers, he may really just need to get fighter and gunship. And yeah, he sees the bomber now. Is that probe gonna scout them? I don't know, like, maybe, maybe Galaxian bombers he can deal with just using missile batteries. He's gonna tech it, so clearly he sees that. <clears throat> uh, support cruiser anti-air, maybe? He doesn't have the money for it, though. By the way, oh my gosh, Aim has a lot of money. He was just floating, like, 1400 in a, uh, a moment ago, I think. Bomber's gonna drop on the, uh, AVs here, actually. I thought for a second that was a silly move, but now that I see- Yeah, he's trying to clear the way for the assault ships to get in there. And, um, he's kind of letting these bombers get strafed by a lot of anti-air fire, actually. But I think they're all gonna get out. Oh, boy. Yeah, 278, he's okay. Um... Interceptors looks like want to try and get like one last damage dump on this base printer, but this guy's gonna die for it So it's, this does not seem worth it to me Yeah, the other guy's gonna die too. This must just be bad unit control Like I don't usually see a game do stuff like that now the BCs are out though. So like he's not gonna die just yet, but The thing about these air threats is always that they're never gonna go away targeting jammer by the way would be really nice Like right here. It's gonna miss the window though. So the base printer is gonna go down as well Could have saved that guy Sandskimmer's gonna run into the back line now. Who's has got a, a fair bit of power in alien? Oh no, it's oh. I, I never liked this idea of like moving out. Cause like the thing is, uh... by the way, these LAVs is gonna have to run out of here. Cause the, the AVs are gonna catch him, like I said, quite a bit of power in ALMs. But the thing is like your opponent still has, your opponent still has air, right? And so like you're moving out with the carrier now, but I mean, for what? Like, the idea is like, well, I'm, I'm kind of losing, so I need to do something dramatic to get back into it, but... You know, wh what I mean by that is not dying. And <laughs> I think that the bombers will just kill the BCs, and then... A-game has rail tech, you know, so he's not going to be just, like, killed by this or something. He's building heavy rails, indeed. No third PC, by the way. This is something I've noticed about A-game's play. He often will go for air off of two, and I always am getting a third PC, and I often think I kind of pay the price for it, so... I should try that sometime. Now, this is a lot of BCs, but, I mean, that's, like, the bombers are just gonna kill this, though. Agen just needs to be careful with his carrier, don't, don't let this guy die. Um, and then the heavy rails can, you know, deal with the Savon carrier here. And he has the backstep potential, too, because obviously this means that the Coalition player has no frontline production. He's not gonna be able to win this fight, actually, but, you know, he'll at least put some pressure on there make his opponent react to it. Where are the bombers? Okay, here they are, finally launching now. Oh no, uh, this is... Oh. Uncharacteristic to see bad unit control like this from A game. He manages to get all three of them damaged before they've even finished launching. Um, the 1BC already almost dying to the, uh, the railguns here. These bombers have the ammo capacity upgrade as well, so if you can kill the anti-air, then he can just kind of jump in and do whatever he likes. Looks like they're gonna have to run in anyway, though, so the anti-air is still here. But the bombers will be able to do their damage. So down goes one BC. Um, but this is starting to look messy. Egan could die here. Oh, oh because because like these bombers can't dock while the, one of them is docking. So only one of them is gonna get out here. One BC survived. The rails have been caught up to, so they're all dead now. Egan could actually die here. And look, the backstab didn't work clearly, so... Oh my gosh, <laughs> well, this is not what I was expecting. 
Uh. Well, yeah, but you should have just killed them with the bombers. I'm quite surprised that this is happening. And with two support cruisers healing this BC, I mean, it's barely taking damage to this carrier. Yeah, Aegon's gonna see it, so he's, he's focusing on the SC first. Well, I mean, you should have you should have killed like all three of those guys just by launching at them constantly while they were, you know, because while he was driving up, right? You just kind of drive up and blow things up, right? And then you know you're not gonna have to give up the position because you know yeah he's got BCs but you have rails already. He's only got like two or three rather than well he had two or three. He's only got like one maybe rather than having like two or three. I think that was a bit of a throw honestly, but like I'm amazed it was even possible to be honest. A game though, not giving up yet. He's moving this carrier out here. Now he is technically on two base, kind of. <laughs> this BC is so low, by the way. He's wiped the whole army from Moose. But, but yeah, A game doesn't really have much of an army to speak of himself. So, is Moose floating? But he is. Yeah, he wasn't really building during that time. He's got RU miners. Yeah, he should flip these guys to RUs if he's got such a big float, right? A game still has one bomber left. Now these two missile batteries are alive as well, though. So. If Moose can stop these two from dying, that'd be really, really good. BC gonna do what it can in that regard. Wow, it's, it's actually chunking. Yeah, yeah. It looks like Moose has managed to kind of push him off that second base as well. And this BC is still alive. The bomber could come in and kill it anyway, but... But yeah, those bombers, they should have launched when there was no anti-air. And then, if there was going to be anti-air when they launched, they should have, you know, you should have rotated the carrier backwards so that they got away from the frying pan, right? Because they just took so much damage on, like, the approach. I really think you would have lived if that hadn't happened, because obviously the, the bomber could kill the BCs pretty well. I didn't want to finish this guy off here. Ooh, I don't know about this. Ugh! Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he can't run in now, right? Because obviously he's taking too much damage. Just tell our BCs are top tier. <laughs> well, well, they sure did win this game, it looks like. Can't say it wasn't a mistake from a game that it facilitated it, but I mean, they, they definitely pulled their weight. There is one CU guy mining here. This, this might be fantasy GG timing at this point. Moose still floating a huge number of CUs. It's pretty funny to see. And he's really just doing this with AABs. I mean, he doesn't have real tech, obviously, but... Oh yeah, he can get a GG there. I mean, he wants to build more BCs if he could, but he really can't, so... And Moose is gonna win, so that means he's won two out of the three games that we watched here. That's crazy. Well freaking done. I mean, to be fair, uh, game two looked like just Agen kind of floundering a little bit, but... <clears throat> well, not everybody can rail rush as well as me. They tell me, they tell me, Bozo, you have the best rail rush... I, I say I know. 